Hello YouTube, this is Bidrew1111, Gamer Tag Bidrew93, and uh, this video is going to be about DirectX 12 and um, some new light that has been shed on DirectX 12 thanks to um, a CEO at Stardock, I believe it is. Um, his name's Brad Wardell, um, and basically, um, uh, recently he's been interviewed by, um, I believe it was a podcast called The Inner Circle, and, uh, and, uh, and basically, um, he is, um, he, he has his hands directly on DirectX 12, he knows everything there is to know about DirectX 12, and he certainly did open up a hell of a lot about its capabilities and what it's going to do for, he talked about what it's going to do for PC, but also he talked about what it's going to do for Xbox One. And, um, and basically I did a recent video about, you know, about everyone keep, you, you know, keep yourselves level-headed, um, not to get too excited, DirectX 12 is going to be good, but don't like expect unbelievable differences, just be realistic, but I gotta say, after like, after like reading the articles and, and, and <laughs> like reading more into like what this, um, well one article really, um, but um, after reading more about what this guy had to say, I'm really quite shocked in a good way. Um, um, I can't actually quite believe just how different we could possibly be, how much difference we could possibly be witnessing in the future. It might not be the very near future, but still in the future for Xbox One, we will be seeing a lot of difference. I'm doing me wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there. This generally is going to be about Xbox One, but um, Brad Wardell did say that this goes for PS4 and Xbox One in terms of evolution. Um, neither console has um, touched the sides. Um, like DirectX 12 is for Xbox, not for PS4. But nevertheless, um, he did say that they're both like very much at the very, very bottom of their life uh, in, in terms of where they'll be at the end of their life cycle. Um, but yeah, just to begin, I basically have read the article and I'm just breaking it down so it's a lot more, it's easier to read, a lot more interesting. Right, here we go. Right. Right, when we see DirectX 12's game, uh, he basically said, when we see DirectX 12 games, we won't be able to look at DirectX 11 games in the same way. Apparently it's going to be that intense, that good. Um, but um, I will go on. Uh, DirectX 11, at the moment, can't handle the same amount of light sources as DirectX 12. Um, and I believe we witnessed this on the Windows 10 conference because they had DirectX 11 running next to DirectX 12 and it was showing you these constant images and um, lighting and, and, and trying to show you how much either one can handle and we saw DirectX 11 crash um, a lot sooner. Well, DirectX 12 didn't even crash, it kept going and, and uh, I believe we witnessed that ourselves already. Um, and Wardell also made a comment. Uh, I just want to say sorry if none of these like seem like you know. I'm just fire, I've just done bullet points and I'm just going to fire them off. Um, Wardell said that he winces whenever people claim that PlayStation 4 and Xbox One are just mid-range PCs. He believes that the two machines. He claims these are his words. He believes that they are monsters and uh, and are very capable of doing great things and he has also said that the Xbox One's evolution to be specific will be vastly more extreme than the Xbox 360's so from that like if you look at the 360 how it was from beginning to end it was a totally different machine like you unrecognizable so if the Xbox One from now which I feel is absolutely fantastic anyway is going to be is going to have an even bigger like evolutionary gap than the 360 did between its for between the beginning of its life then I think we're in for a real treat and it's going to be a very very good generation of console for Xbox fans um, and for PS4 fans they're going to have of course evolution themselves but to hear that as an Xbox One fan that's uh, pretty pretty amazing um, um, what what we are currently seeing in terms of games and the standard is direct X9. Um, now, I was quite shocked to hear this. I honestly believed we were hitting the DirectX 11 at least, but apparently not. Apparently, we're seeing what we're seeing now is more around the DirectX 9 sort of. Um, oh, sorry, I was crying then. Um, about around the, like the DirectX 9 sort of level. Um, and here we go. This is pretty interesting. So, for any of you out there who claim that the Xbox One can't hit 1080p, this is why. 
Um, the reason we do not see multi-platform games in 1080p on the Xbox One at this present stage is because game developers do not want to put the extra hours in to specifically code. They want the game on the shelves as soon as possible. So basically at the moment, and, and he also goes on to say, we could be seeing DirectX 12 level graphics today if developers um, were, would, were willing to put the extra time in because apparently it's not an easy task to specifically code these games. It, you're talking, you know, say a game has been said to be put on the shelf in May of like 2015. I'm assuming if they wanted to make it that good, hit that, you know, they'd have to push it way back, like like December or maybe the next year again. I, I'm only assuming, but it just seems to me that these developers are more interested at the moment in getting their game on the shelves and getting some money in the bank <laughs> than they are in terms of getting their games to the best standard. But I'm sure that will change, especially if like DirectX 12 simplifies things and makes it easier to code. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're see that's the that's what he had to say on the matter. So 1080p is not we're not bound. We can't. It's not that we can't get it. It's just developers choose not to. And I have said that on previous videos already. Um, current games aren't current games that aren't CPU bound, like games that are already out, have been out for a while, um, will not see any benefit or difference from DirectX 12 when DirectX 12 hits. Um, but we, uh, you know, I knew that already. I'm not expecting any of my games to, you know, become wowzer overnight just because of this new uh, DirectX 12. And uh, okay, according to Wardell, we will be likely, now this is really cool, we'll be likely to see a 300 to 500 percent graphical CPU optimization boost. Now that is a blur, that, that is like, that took my breath away when I read that because obviously, and, and I'm glad he went on to say this as well, but he admitted to downplaying, and they all did, that they, they, he has admitted to them all downplaying it. Like when they came up to, on to even when they went on the Windows 10 conference stage and were saying, um, we're only going to see a 50% boost. That was just them trying to keep expectations down for scepticism. He, uh, he openly admitted, he said, the reason we haven't gone out and said 300 to 500% boost is because of scepticism, haters, people looking at it negatively, uh, he, they, they, they have quite tried to keep it on the hush-hush, but that is what we're going to be seeing. Like Again, maybe not straight away, but by the end of the, the Xbox One's life cycle, we'll be seeing, um, well, 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 regardless of when, that's what he had to say, 300 to 500% CPU optimization, and that, I thought 50% was a lot, that is a lot, and that is confirmed, so... That's all I have to say. Um, Phil Spencer is choosing words very carefully to keep expectations down for the for the moment because the first lineup of DirectX 12 games were written originally for DirectX 11 and have been updated to DirectX 12. So basically, the games will not be um, will you will not basically you will not see the true benefits of DirectX 12 until games are specifically written for DirectX 12 whereas these first lineup of games were DirectX 11 written and been updated so they're not going to be as as amazing as they will be when it's a game strictly written made and built around DirectX 12 and he and basically we'll be see with updated games from DirectX 11 we'll be seeing like a 10 to 20 percent boost which is still a boost but it's not 300 to 500 or 50 for that matter. So yeah, so just but, but we got to expect these things, guys. It's it's, uh, it's gradual growth, but you can't expect miracles when things have been written for older stuff. And but when we do see DirectX 12 in full force, then we'll start seeing. And this is where it gets. This is what I'm ending on. This is what it gets more interesting. Games that are written specifically for DirectX 12. Um, we will be seeing the true benefits, and by the end of the console's life cycle, we will be seeing graphic graphics that can match up to the Lord of the Rings Return of the King film graphics. Now, I'm sorry, like I don't care anyone out there, whether you're a lover or a hater of Xbox, that, that alone, I, before anything I've read, I should have opened up with that, that is incredible. 
like even now I watch Lord of the Rings and I'm just absolutely wowed and people say like oh I'll never reach CGI level graphics blah 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 well listen up it's been confirmed we'll be seeing Lord of the Rings Return of the King st like graphical for that kind of graphical fidelity at some point whether it's now or at the very end we are going to see that kind of level so we're going to be evolving up to that point um, and then just to end Basically, he did say PS4 and Xbox One will look blatantly different from now to the end of its console life cycle. We have not touched the sides. So for anyone who thinks that either one, not just Xbox or P PS4, the, for anyone, PC elitists looking down on console gamers, for anyone at this point to think that either one have reached you know, their limit, they're wrong. So yeah, that's all I have to say guys, that's literally it. That was um, the interview with CEO Brad Wardell, broken down for you. And um, yeah, so that's all I have to say. Very exciting things for Xbox fans and PS4 fans, but definitely for Xbox fans with this DirectX 12. Thank you for listening, guys. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye.